Hi and welcome back to Scotty's Tech.info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus. And today I want to do a review of a rather interesting book. Uh, one, actually several viewers recommended it quite a while ago and I finally got around to reading it. And the name of that book is The Invisible Rainbow, A History of Electricity and Life by one Arthur Furstenberg. Now, uh, the author, Furstenberg, he, uh, I think he got a bachelor's degree in mathematics, then he went to med school, and while he was in med school, he had something like a series of 40 dental x-rays or something, and uh, during this time he discovered that he is uh, what they call electrosensitive, and he had all kinds of health problems. He apparently still does to this day, so he's become sort of a, a crusader for... Uh, less wireless stuff, um, less electrical pollution, that sort of thing. So, as I say, I finally got around to reading this book, and it's totally fascinating. The first thing I have to say is that it's about 565 pages long, but the, the last approximately 42% of the book is a short notes section, and then an absolutely massive bibliography. Um... He talks about, uh, historically, what's actually gone on with uh, the electrification of the world, both in terms of uh, electricity, telegraph wires, uh, eventually, you know, everything. Cell phones, Wi-Fi, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G. Um, and he talks about uh, the history of how the introduction of each of these new technologies seemed to coincide with certain health problems in the general population. Now his history starts, interestingly enough, with <laughs> the story of static electricity and as far back as like, I think it was 1764, uh, all these people were experimenting with uh, like uh, like Leyden jars and, and st devices that generate static electricity. And apparently back in the day they were doing all sorts of crazy things like zapping each other with with static electricity and people were claiming that it would cure all sorts of diseases. Uh, other people were saying, no, it's dangerous. Uh, they would do crazy things like make, you know, give themselves god-awful headaches or make parts of their body numb for like two days and everyone was just sort of electrocuting one another. <laughs> it, was, it was a little bit interesting. And... Uh, when he reviews this whole history, he, he kind of talks about how um, there were certain positive effects on the human body, and there were also certain negative effects. And eventually, of course, telegraphs came around, uh, electric power came around, and with, each of, with the introduction of each of these new technologies, some sort of illness resulted. And it wasn't just limited to uh, human beings. There were also problems with plant life, with animal life, uh, trees would die, birds would die. Um, in fact, he talks about, uh, I think it was the first recorded bee die-off back in 1904. You may recall that uh, a couple years ago, there it was all over the mainstream media. They were saying, oh my God, you know, what's happening to the bees? It's colony collapse disorder. And of course, some people were suggesting, well, you know, we've got all this 4G and we're introducing, you know, experimental 5G and, uh, you know, the the... The level of saturation of all this RF stuff has kind of, it's, it's like off the charts, so uh, maybe that has something to do with it. And he, again, shows a correlation between the introduction of uh, um, early, I think it was early radio, radio frequency systems. And of course, this was back in the old days, so it's very early radio and that sort of thing. Uh, the introduction of these various systems, including just simple telegraph wires with, you know, simple electrical pulses running over them. It didn't have to actually be wireless. Any sort of electrification, uh, wired, wireless, even 50 or 60 hertz uh, AC or even DC power lines running, uh, you know, all over a city, uh, incidences of diseases started going up, and it precisely correlates. He shows again and again and again how it precisely correlates with, you know, this is when telegraph started, this is when these certain diseases started, this is when power lines happened, this is when incidences of blah started shooting up. So it's actually pretty interesting because, as I said, the bibliography is huge, and, I mean, he, it's, it's an extremely thorough review of all these different correlations. Uh, he also mentions interesting things like uh, 
anxiety disorder. It didn't actually exist in medical literature until 1886. Uh, he even talks about uh, how influenza, the flu, that became a thing apparently in 1889. Before that it was almost as if flu didn't exist. Now of course some people might say, oh we just didn't understand it, blah blah blah. Um, but he shows, and it's fairly convincing, that yeah actually the flu kind of started in, in uh, 1889. And um, well, I'll talk a little bit about that in a, more in a second. In any case, the, the introduction of all this wireless and wired stuff in our electrified world has caused uh, a, a dramatic increase in things like heart disease, diabetes, and cancers of various sorts. But at the same time, it's, it's actually fascinating to me because he says, technically, we are actually living longer. So there's a small population where this stuff is fired up and people who are especially sensitive to it, they feel the effects very powerfully. The rest of us can kind of just write it off and say, ah, no, you're just crazy, you know, because I'm not affected. And yet, uh, how many of us know people who have, uh, you know, heart disease in their 30s? They have, you know, completely blocked arteries. And here we're talking about, like, extremely athletic, healthy people. They eat well, they exercise all the time, you know, blah, blah, blah and suddenly they're having a level of heart disease that would only have been seen in someone who was maybe 60 or 70 years old in the past. Uh, I personally know actually several people uh, in their 30s who are having these sorts of problems. And I mean, when I was growing up, even that was unheard of. Um, so that's pretty interesting because essentially we're all living longer, but we're getting more and more of these serious diseases at younger and younger ages. So it does appear that all this stuff is having some sort of effect on us, according to what he writes anyway, and yet, you know, perhaps medical care has improved, diagnostics have improved, and so we're, we're kind of living longer, but we're suffering more, I guess you could say. Now, I'll just give one quick little example here from the book. Uh, he talks about a school in a town in Spain, and there was a biologist who sort of became the, the guy who... Uh, sort of looked into this and, and, and was uh, appalled. But essentially what happened is you had this, this little school in Spain and they installed a, a cell phone mast that had something like 60 antennas. It looked like a porcupine or something not far away from it. And uh, beginning in 2000, that first year that this system was put online, there were, uh, I think it was five kids of varying ages in this specific school who came down with either leukemia or lymphoma, two different types of cancer. And he writes that, you know, I looked it up and in the entire uh, previous year, the entire province, not just the little town, but in the entire province, there were only four cases of leukemia and lymphoma. And here we have, okay, here's the cell tower, boom, turn it on. And in this one little city in the entire province, there were five cases. So eventually what happened is uh, everybody was, you know, waving their hands and going, what's going on here? And it was kind of spearheaded by this gentleman. And eventually they closed the school down and they ended up uh, taking the mask down and blah, blah, blah. Now, that wasn't the only thing that was happening, though, because he said for this small number of people who had uh, cancer develop, there were much greater numbers of people who were experiencing headaches, insomnia, memory loss, heart arrhythmias, and various other intense neurological reactions. So these kids were essentially the canaries in the coal mine, but when this guy actually went and sort of dug into it, he was discovering that actually everyone was reporting more and more health problems. It was just this small group of kids who had the worst of it, essentially. He also did some research and discovered that sparrows, storks, kestrels, and various other birds were strongly affected by the presence of these radio towers. He kind of did some studies and little experiments and said, okay, well, you know, how many of the eggs will hatch if they're near this, uh, you know, uh, cell phone transmitting and how many won't? And, um, yeah, he discovered that, yes, there were very definite differences. Um, all of this is documented and it's all out there. And that's one of the fascinating things about this is that, uh, all this information that he provides is like available for anyone. You can look at the bibliography and, and you know look up the sources and like it's all there. Um, so it's not like this is some guy just making stuff up. It's sort of it's a history of all the crazy things that have happened and uh, it appears to all be true, which is kind of scary. 
But of course you could say, well, right, just because there's a correlation between the rollout of telegraphs or 2G or 3G or Wi-Fi, correlation is not equal to causation. And of course we hear this one a lot. The problem with that statement is it's kind of become cliche because it's sort of like it doesn't matter how much data is displayed to a person. It doesn't matter how much, uh, it doesn't matter how many people who are, are uh, you know, fancy pants researchers or prestigious scientists or researchers. It doesn't matter how many of those people you bring forward. Everybody can just say, oh, well, correlation, it, that doesn't mean causation. And that actually reminds me of another point he made in the book, which is that like with the flu and, and other types of, of uh, diseases and uh, the beginning of, you know, 1900s and such, um, he basically says that, uh, he, he actually quotes various studies and he tries to show that uh, viruses are not what actually causes disease. It's all the electromagnetic fields and waves and such that does. Now, uh, I'm not exactly sure what to do with that because as far as I know, yes, viruses are real and I kind of look at it and say, well, uh, the question is not, you know, did, does your 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi you know, cause you to have this illness, but more like, does it actually weaken your body to enough of a degree that then the virus can take hold? Um, that's actually, I mean, I don't know the answer to that question. Just with this, this whole crazy uh, COVID thing that we have going on, you can read from various experts so many contradictory things that some people say we have like latent viruses in our bodies and they can be activated. Other people say, no, that's not true at all. And we're talking like both are actually seriously smart people. Uh, I don't know the answer to that question. Uh, what I do know is that there are many other factors. For example, if you've uh, watched the movie Dark Waters, which I viewed recently, it's about how uh, DuPont Back in the day, they were uh, producing all kinds of Teflon, and there was a chemical that was a byproduct of the production of Teflon coatings for pans and stuff, and they were basically dumping it, and this made the water supply toxic. People had black teeth, they were getting cancer, all this kind of stuff. Uh, so, you know, at that time, there were, uh, you know, early cell phones, you know, digital cell phone systems and such that were being rolled out. So, uh, you know, which one was it? Was it the toxic water? Was it the poison water? Or was it the, the, the EMS from the new cell phone system? Or was it both working together? Um, obviously, we can say that, yes, the poison was bad. And from all the data available, we can say, well, yes, the EMFs appeared to be bad. But it also seems to affect some people more than others. So it's extremely complicated to actually say anything kind of concrete and, and you know, sensible because you'd have to take all the variables into account. Going back to the, the school in Spain where all those kids were getting leukemia and lymphoma, um, what else do we know about that? Do we know that, that the EMFs from the, the new digital cell network, do we know that that was the only factor? I don't know. I can't answer that question. Uh, could it be that the people in that town were exposed to some toxic chemical via pollution? Could it have been air pollution? Could it have been something in the school? Um, there are so many variables that, you know, I, I don't know how we can actually say conclusively it's this or that. What we would actually need is like a super thorough, hardcore study, as I've said before. And um, whether that's an epidemiological study or a double-blind blah, 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 like, I don't really care. It just needs to be a, a, a long and thorough study. Um, so yeah, it's, it's complicated, and I have more questions than I have answers. Um, Furstenberg, in the book, he doesn't really say, okay, here's the solution. Um, he also talks about uh, Dr. Uh, Mallory Blythe, I, th I think her name is, and I've talked about her before, and she apparently is also super sensitive to this stuff, and she used to have to like live in, in, in her car, out of her car in the middle of a forest to get away from this stuff. Um, he doesn't actually provide any solutions to the problems, especially to people who suffer the most from this stuff, but uh, he's basically just presenting this, this long history, and it's very interesting. There's a ton of data there, and there are no actual answers. It's more of a book that you read uh, so that you can kind of be aware of the whole history and maybe ask yourself more intelligent questions. But I definitely recommend reading it. Uh, it was totally fascinating. I was basically 
glued to the book for for a couple days and um, as I said, I, I don't have any answers. I don't have any any solutions. I do think that there is now more than enough data to indicate that yes, there is something going on here, and we definitely need to have some kind of hardcore long term study and basically figure this stuff out and sort it out. Um, so pick up a copy of the book uh, if you're interested. It's um, yeah, it's long, but it's good. Uh, even if you don't like history. It's actually utterly fascinating. So the book is called The Invisible Rainbow, A History of Electricity and Life by Arthur Furstenberg. I'll link to it down in the description. For more techie tips, see scottystech.info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.